Hello everyone, Nathaniel here from Super Game Crashers and welcome back to Tech It Classic. Welcome to part four of our Brave New World. So in the last video we went over uh, solar panels. As you can see I've added some more solar panels and a bat box of course. We've got our bat box. And in today, uh, today's episode what we're going to be doing is we're going to be getting some upgrades for this. Looking more into red power and uh, diving a little bit into equivalent exchange. So let's get going. So in Industrial Craft 2, I promise you guys we get some upgrades for these machines because they're quite slow, uh, they're taking their time, so we're going to be making ourselves a speed upgrade. To make a speed upgrade, we're actually going to need these things called coolant cells, which are made from 4 tin, which makes 16 empty cells. Then you just right click an empty cell on water to make a water cell, then put the water cell into an extractor, and you end up with one of these, a coolant cell. And as you can see, they don't stack. So this means that when they're in the machine, or when the machine's making them, once it's made one, you have to take one out uh, in order for it to start on the next. So it's a little bit tedious, a little bit frustrating, but uh, yeah. So cool itself, brilliant. Now we can make ourselves a speed upgrade. I actually got it wrong in the last video. I said that you could also make power upgrades. Um, I was right, but we won't need them just yet, simply because the amount of power that is coming into this bat box and what comes out of the bat box uh, is enough for these machines. It's when we start using something like uh, uh, high voltage solar arrays that we'll actually need uh, power upgrades and stuff like that to stop the machines from exploding from too much power. And uh, we get things like uh, low voltage transformers and high voltage transformers and medium transformers and all sorts of wonderful power related stuff, which we won't get into just yet, but we will later on. So, speed upgrade, and this is how we make our speed upgrade, uh, three coolant cells, um, one, uh, two copper cables on each side, and an electric circuit, and you guys already know how to make those, so let's take these out of here, and build ourselves our upgrades. <coughs> and yes, I was looking at uh, coke uh, for uh, another part of the video, uh, but that'll probably be next time when we're looking to Steve's carts. And here we go. Overclocker upgrades. Now these things are brilliant. They're effectively the speed upgrades, but they are overclockers. So we've got to put one in here, one in here, and one in here. And as you can see, it's already making things go a lot faster. The only downside is, of course, it uses a lot more energy. Thankfully, however, we're just on the verge of using the same amount of energy uh, or getting a little bit more from our solar panels. This is the reason why I have made more. Okay, so now that that's been done, let's go back into red power and we're actually going to finish off this little arrangement here with a powered alloy furnace. So um, here's what we're going to do. Uh, we need some blue alloy wire and this is why we had all that flax so we could make all this wool and some blue alloy ingots. Uh, and by doing this, we'll actually make the wire. Now the good thing about the wire is it's uh, universal with all things in red power. So we can use it for pretty much everything, and there we go. And you also get a lot considering the little bit that you put in there. So there we go, blue alloy wire. And when you place it on the ground, the good th thing about this stuff, unlike the other stuff where it can be placed in any vacant block, is that this stuff can be stuck on walls, but it can't be stuck on glass. So yeah, brilliant. And it's really easy to break with your hand, so fantastic. The next thing we're going to be making is a blue electric alloy furnace and this is the same as uh, that only it uses power instead so two iron one blue alloy ingot and five brick blocks gives us a blue electric uh, alloy furnace now i won't go into these two just yet until we've hooked this thing up so let's have a little look okay we'll just break that now this is where the tricky part comes in because i have to take this out. There we go. And then we'll just attach our wire. Which, if I'm careful, I'm not doing right. Uh, I always struggle with this for some reason. I don't know why. It should just connect. But it's not. Okay, let's get some something to help us here. Some gravel. This will do. I always struggle with this bit. I have no idea why I make it so difficult on myself, but I do. Hey, there we 
we go. Now it's all connected. Now we just need to connect it to our furnace. Of course, we can't have this here, otherwise it won't connect. So I need some more wood. Uh, wood. Uh, wood. Wood. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, uh, and then just connect uh, our blue electric alloy furnace. Boop. And as you can see, it's already collecting power. This means now that we won't actually need any form of coal to keep this thing powered. And as you can see, that uh, battery box up there has a sort of uh, little label on it on the front that tells you that it's got power and it fills up and depletes uh, as we draw power from it. The next thing we're going to need to make is brass ingots, which we make by combining three copper with one tin. I'm sorry, the curtain's on the chair. Get off. Squeaky chair. Uh, we need brass a lot, so I'm just going to show you guys very quickly how you make it. Very simple. You uh, pop the three uh, copper and one tin, and as you can see, it's a lot faster because it's using power and not coal. And there we are. Loads and loads of brass ingots, so plenty of brass. And we'll need this to make pneumatic tubes, which is made by uh, using this arrangement. And pneumatic tubes will be very useful in the construction of our um, factories. Now, there are, uh, this brings me on to pipes. Now, I thought I'd uh, have to explain this a little bit better. Pipes basically allow you to transfer items, such as blocks, from one machine to another. And uh, Industrial Craft comes with its own version of pipes. The only problem that I have with it is that Industrial Craft's pipes aren't very reliable. They're very expensive as well, such as if you want a sorting um, pipe, that will actually cost you a lot of diamonds. Whereas Red Power's pipes, aka the pneumatic tubes, are a lot cheaper. The only downside with it is that there is a lot of manufacturing. You have to use the blue alloy furnace and you have to use a blue electric furnace. and There's all sorts of uh, wonderful stuff that it makes it very complicated. So the thing is, you can either use the expen expensive method, which is uh, using Industrial Craft 2's pipes, or you can use the long method, which is Red Power. I personally find Red Power to be a lot more efficient. Uh, simply because uh, they, there is a lot of stuff in Red Power designed specifically to help you organize all of your um, items. So we'll have things like filters and um, uh, we'll have things like extractors and duplicators and all sorts of, well not duplicators, well all sorts of stuff that will help us in the long run. So I'm glad we got that done. Now, we need something very, very important before we can continue. We need a nether portal so that we can get a very important piece of equipment. Now, in order to make another portal, we're going to need a diamond pick to get ourselves some obsidian. Well, we're not going to actually get ourselves diamond pick, we're going to make a diamond drill. Yes, I did touch on this, I didn't want to go straight into it because obviously once we've got the diamond drill, we'll go get ourselves some obsidian. So, this is the uh, design for a uh, diamond drill, uh, for a drill, sorry. And uh, it's just five refined iron, one electronic circuit, and one battery. Now, as you can probably guess, this means it needs power. So we've got ourselves a mining drill. Now, if I give it some diamonds, I can make it diamond tipped, which basically means that it's a diamond drill. Hooray! With the diamond drill, of course, we can get the obsidian. As you've probably guessed, it needs power. But it doesn't always require power. If it runs out of power, we can actually still use it. It's just very, very slow. So it's always more efficient to give it more power. And uh, it does, I think it takes about 10,000 EU, which is brilliant because we really wouldn't need much more than that. Right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put away the stuff I don't need, uh, most notably uh, anything that I'm worried that it's going to get burned. I don't need that. Uh, I don't need that. I don't need that. I don't need that. Uh, keep those. I do need a bucket because we're going to need some water. And then I'll also put that away so I don't want to lose it. And uh, let's go get ourselves some obsidian and we will start uh, building our nether portal. As you can see, there's already some. Uh, lava at the bottom of this, or magma. It's actually called magma if it's still in the ground. It's lava when it's above. A uh, little scientific fact for you guys, if you didn't know. And bloop! There we 
go, fantastic. And I actually didn't know that this was missing. Huh. So let's just build our staircase back. Fantastic. Right, okay, here's the thing. We'll just cut some of this. No lava underneath it. Pop the water in the hole and continue mining. So we need 10 of these, of course, because it's a normal portal. Uh, I did check, but unfortunately there is a mod that I do particularly like. It's not in this mod pack, however, because it would have been really fun to tinker around with it uh, later. Uh, I don't think it's in this anyway. I can actually try and see if I can find it if I type in this. No, it's not. What I was going to search for was something called a linking book, which is connected to a mod called Mistcraft which allows you to make books which go to uh, other dimensions so you can make your own worlds. And that would have been uh, quite useful because uh, if I could make it work, we could actually make uh, our own little worlds uh, where we could build power stations and stuff like that. That means if the power station were to go kablooey, we wouldn't damage the overworld and uh, we also wouldn't completely lag out the uh, internal server. Okay, so we've got 10, that's enough. Let's leave. And, uh, oh dear, has night fallen on, on our brave little world? It has. Hopefully we won't get attacked by every single mob that's out there. Um, come on, come on, come on, come on. I should really put some stairs down uh, so I can uh, get up faster. So let's sleep through the night. And then we'll build our portal. You've probably noticed on the left hand side there's some floating blocks. That is where our portal is. So let's go and build it. Uh, probably best if I took a flint and steel with me actually. Uh, so let's put this uh, bucket away. Let's, put, uh, let's take some of this. I don't want to take that with me. Uh, yeah, I think that'll do. One of these. Cook. See, it's cooking even faster because of the overclocker upgrade. Uh, I need one of these. And then we'll build ourselves a flint and steel so we can activate the portal. Okay, let's go build it. There's an enderman over there. We'll hopefully avoid him. Up, up. One, two, one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two. Look at that. Proper portal, lovely. Put some there, and let's switch it on. Okay, now we'll head into the nether. Hopefully it won't crash recording. I have noticed that uh, it skips a little bit when I'm recording my voice, so I won't talk during the transition. Let's go. Oh wait, before we go, there is one thing I do want to do, is I want to, uh, I find the button, enter a waypoint, call this home, caps lock on. Home. That way, if the portal that we come out of isn't this one, I can always find my way back to this house. Otherwise, we'll just lose the coordinates. So, in we go. See you guys in the nether. And here we are, in the nether. Wonderful place, isn't it? Now, what we're here for is glowstone. I'm trying to find a vein that's fairly close. This one looks perfect. Hopefully you won't get annihilated by ghasts. Uh, that one's actually right over a lava lake. I don't want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a marker down. I really don't like hanging out in the nether. Uh, I find it to be absolutely terrifying. So exit portal. Purple is fine. Let's go. Okay, let's find ourselves some glowstone that I can actually get to. Uh, there's some down there. Come on, come on, there must be something. Uh, I really don't like the nether, uh, other than obviously it's extremely hostile, uh, but also because uh, I find it really creepy um, in here. I really don't like it. I mean, look at the soul sound, that's just terrifying. I don't like creepy things. Uh, I've never been a big fan of anything creepy. Some people do like creepy stuff. Not me. I'll stick to what I know. Now really, the only reason we're here is to get glowstone. We do need something else, but we won't get it yet because I need to find something called a uh, 
fortress, a nether fortress, and I don't know if there is one nearby. Right, that should do us. Let's get out of here. Who does want to get out of the nether? Horrible, horrible, horrible place. And now we can touch into equivalent exchange uh, more prominently. Of course, we have our little divining rod. See you guys back in the overworld. Whew. So we spawn back. I think it's if you're in multiplayer that all the portals seem to connect themselves together and there are fire effects still playing. I certainly hope that's a glitch. There it goes. Whew. Right, so now we're going to touch a little bit into Equivalent Exchange and then we'll probably end the episode. So let's head to the new Equivalent Exchange building. Da 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 Probably will add some music at some point. Here we are, this is our Equivalent Exchange building. And we're going to start by building ourselves a Philosopher's Stone. Ooh! So a Philosopher's Stone is literally this recipe. So four glowstone, four redstone, and a diamond. And I've been a really dumbass because I have a crafting table with me. So we'll head back out. Uh, and there is a crafting table over here, I do believe. Yes, there is. So we'll build ourselves a pea stone. I, call, I will be calling it a pea stone. I won't be saying Philosopher's Stone every time I need to build one. So like that. Voila! One Philosopher's Stone. Now, the interesting thing about a Philosopher's Stone is it is used for transmutation. So I can transmute uh, various elements uh, into different things. Uh, such as I could transmute wood, when I want to do it in here, or grass. So I can turn the grass into sand and back into grass. I can't change uh, certain items, such as um, this is marble. But I can change others, so grass, 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 grass. I can also charge this thing by holding down V. Now it will affect an entire area. Boop! See? Change the whole thing. And this is very useful uh, if you want to, like, completely change areas. So if I wanted, if I found a beach and I wanted to turn it all into mud, uh, which would be weird, but if I did, I could actually do that. But the pea stone has another use, and I'm going to show you that use right now. Uh, here. I've got four gold ingots. Now, here's the wonderful thing about the pea stone, and this is why people see it as being overpowered. If I put this in the crafting bench and add one, two, three, oop, there you go, one, I get eight in iron ingots for one gold. So if I had a load of gold and no iron, I could actually transmute a load of the gold into iron. But if I add three more, I get a diamond and it also depowers the stone uh, but the good thing about the stone is it doesn't actually require any EMC to work at all so the good thing about this thing is I can use it to transmute all of my uh, gold into diamonds if I really wanted to which means I have now got that diamond that I used for the pea stone back so I can then uh, make other stuff and I will be making a lot of cool stuff with this but I think that'll do it for this episode, guys. Uh, in the next episode, I will go further into Equivalent Exchange. Uh, because we've got all the machines we really need to get going. And Equivalent Exchange uh, will be all done in that building. Because that's where magic should be done. Okay, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I will be back in the next episode uh, with um, hopefully more Equivalent Exchange stuff. And we'll get into transmutation as well as something called uh, a tablet, which will be very useful for recording all of our items so that we can make lots and lots of them for building in the future. And we'll be kissing goodbye to our rubber tree farm because we can solely rely on equivalent exchange. So thank you very much for watching, guys. And this is Nathaniel signing off. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!